So um, I hope you can hear me now. Welcome to yet another live session on speaking master skills or mastering speaking skills. So today we are going to look at how we can handle sensitive issues. And this is going to be a really interesting session. So on your chat box, please type where you're from. And I would be really excited to uh, answer your questions and uh, to help you improve your speaking skills. Right. So we're looking at how to handle sensitive matters as part of uh, the clinical communication criteria of OET speaking. Right. So I'm looking for uh, your feedback. And uh, this is going to be really interesting. Excellent. So, um, well, um, there could be a, a slight delay while we get started. Um, and that's all right. So, and I would be really excited. Perfect. All right. Let me know where you are joining from uh, around the world, and uh, it could be good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are from the world. Yes, from Victor from Nigeria, uh, Munir from Pakistan, Deepa from the UK. Mohammed from Iran, Fatima from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, excellent. Aida from Philippines, great to see all of you join. Yes, hello, Alicia, Daigi, Aida, Angelo, good to see all of you from the Philippines, from Iraq, from Morocco, from Ireland, from again, from. Des and Anna from the Philippines, from Chile, Javier from Chile, great. Mai from Egypt, from Sudan, from India, from everywhere, great. So here we go. Yannick from London, good evening, everyone. I'm sorry I cannot catch up with all your names, but I'll try to um, catch up with you once in a while. So the core area we are going to look into today is handling sensitive matters. Now, in the chat box, can you type in uh, an answer to this question? Have your patients discussed sensitive matters with you? Now, this is very important in your professional life as well as uh, in the OET's uh, speaking test. Now, um, a lot of candidates find this aspect a little bit difficult because even at work, you are not used to handling sensitive issues. And um, worldwide, health professionals are often not well trained in handling sensitive matters. And that reflects at the workplace and in the OET speaking test as well. Yes, so you're telling. Raju is telling, Afra is telling, yes, people have um, discussed sensitive matters. And that's um, probably uh, not a very comfortable time for you to be discussing sensitive issues with your patients. Um, so a lot of you have gone through it. And um, has it been a good experience? Now, can you think of this? Think of an embarrassing or distressing condition or circumstances or events which you have had to face. A patient told you about a particular um, condition or uh, you know, a, a situation, they find it difficult to discuss with you and, um, and uh, you, know, you were also perhaps not too comfortable or you've had you know, some issues uh, in handling that. Can you think of those situations? And can you type in, yes, um, we, you had to ask during history taking, yes, Raju, that's right. 
sometimes during history taking, but sometimes much later into uh, the discussion with a patient. Um, Ab Abdo says, of course, it's very important indeed, yes. Um, sexual history in terms of assessing HIV risk. Excellent, Raju, yes, that's one area which we will be um, covering today. Yes, so um, it's very difficult to talk to a person about their sexual history or a lot of other embarrassing conditions. Um, yeah, the sexual orientation of a person, yeah, it's difficult, it's sensitive, and um, um, a lot of people do not uh, know what to do when you have to deal with a, a sensitive issue. Others also can type in um, any event or a condition or, you know, a situation which you have had to face with a patient which is uh, very, very embarrassing. Um, yes, gender fluidity, yes. Um, religious beliefs, yes, Yannick, um, having STD, yes, ain't, yes, that's right. Um, yeah, so, so it's good to know that you are aware of a lot of situations and you have gone through that. So that makes it easy um, for us to, to explore how you can do that better, improve on those areas and um, uh, yeah, excellent uh, Vasavi, uh, yes, problems related to uh, urinary tract, perfect. So I've got a few examples on the screen. Now this is not an exhaustive list. It doesn't cover everything, but just a few examples um, which could, uh, you know, come under um, the scanner for you in, uh, you know, handling uh, sensitivity or embarrassing situations. So uh, you have mental health issues like uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, um, ADHD, schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, lifestyle related like obesity and diabetes, sexual health as we have discussed. Um, Nihaya says chronic disease, yes. Duru says overweight. Imre says disclosing sensitive information. Excellent, excellent. Uh, breaking bad news, Gayatri, very good. Absolutely, yes. Physical problems. Michael from, from Cuba, yes. Or the UK, right. You have uh, age-related uh, issues like, uh, you know, urinary incontinence dependence or addictions, alcoholism, substance abuse, and all, all those things, terminal illnesses like cancer, dermatological problems, hygiene, all those things, right? So let's move on. Now, this is very important. Your sensitivities may be different uh, to those of the patient. As a healthcare professional, you would have experienced seen and discussed these issues over and over. So you are very comfortable with these sometimes. So it's, it's, it's part of your professional work and you see it every day, day in, day out. So it's not a big deal for you. So you may not be too sensitive about some of those issues, but for a patient, perhaps they could be encountering it for the first time. And then, so they are very much worried about how they're going to discuss these things and you know how will they start the conversation and uh, what would the um the doctor or the nurse or whoever is the health professional think about it isn't it uh, you know going to be uh, a lot of shameful experience and all those things but uh, you know you need to understand that and uh, be empathetic about uh, uh, those things good to see um Shahir from Bangladesh and Devin from the UAE. Excellent. Uh, forgive me if I pronounce your names wrong. I'm looking at a, a, a screen from a little bit uh, distance. So, well, I'll try to keep it close to me. Uh, right. So remember, um, now when you are in the OET's speaking test, a lot of times candidates forget that you're supposed to be doing the role of a health professional. So if you're a doctor, you have to uh, 
um, do what a doctor do at work. And if you're a nurse, you have to do what a nurse would do at work. So, uh, but in a, in a test condition, sometimes you get stressed and you forget that this is what you're supposed to do. So when you have that stress already, you know, you're not going to think a lot about, okay, this is a sensitive topic and I have to show some sensitivity while I discuss that. So you have to deliberately and consciously look at issues that could be sensitive and learn how to handle that better. So once again, I repeat, your sensitivities may be different from those of the patient. Yes, so now from KSA, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and uh, um, Swadeep from Bangladesh. Um, yeah, excuse me, I have a slight power outage, but still I can continue. Uh, excellent. Um, yeah, the backup power is back. Sorry for that. Um, now I'm going to um, just give you a few um, warm-up activities just to be on track. We have discussed some of these. But quickly, I want you to identify um, which of these is appropriate when you're talking um, to a patient. So you, you see a young boy um, and... Uh, you have four uh, options given from uh, a health professional. Now, you have to tell me which is appropriate given the sensitivity of the matter. Hello everyone from everywhere, from the UAE, from Philippines, from Bangladesh. You're welcome, Sana. From Baluchistan, great to see all of you, yes. Uh, I see options three, two, three, three, three. Uh, right. AB from UA. Yes, everyone. Yeah, most of you have a uh, selected option three, which is the right one. So it's not okay to tell somebody that they are fat or chubby or obese. The more uh, you know, sensitive way of telling that is like, for instance, something like your son has an unhealthy weight. So you are taking um, the, the judgmental aspect away from, from the uh, conversation and um, you are looking at the, uh, the problem rather than the, the person. And that happens with a, a number of conditions. Very good. So we've got a lot more to do. So let's go to the next one. Now, you just have two options. I wish it were otherwise, but it looks like the cancer has spread. Or your pathology reports show that the cancer has spread. Which one do you think is appropriate? One or option two? Um, your yeah, answers are coming in. Answers are coming in. Um, yes. So, very good, very good, very good. It's. Um, <laughs> this is interesting because you have um, a lot of options. You're coming up with uh, both the options, but most of you um, go for, uh, I think it's uh, equally balanced. Well, the, the better option is that uh, I wish it were otherwise, but it looks like the cancer has spread. So instead of being too direct, this is something which is uh, better. Uh, for us to do. Uh, you know, like you are pacifying uh, the patient and uh, rather than being too blunt, it's a little bit uh, polished way of uh, telling. Um, yeah. And we are going to a little bit more detailed analysis of some of the uh, uh, 
examples which uh, I'd like to discuss with you. And we have some of our previous um, patients with us. Now we have Maya. If you remember, Maya was there in our previous sessions as well. You know, Maya was embarrassed when a colleague at the law firm told her that she had a bad breath. Now, that's really um, not a good thing for somebody to tell you that, you know, you, know you, you have a bad breath. However, she does not want halitosis to affect her high profile job as a lawyer and has decided to see a doctor. So this is the, the situation, the background. And uh, I've got a, um, a role play card for you based on this. And uh, so we are going to um, discuss how you can handle specific points in the role play card um, so that, uh, you know, um, you, you are able to do it better and uh, get great scores in your OET speaking, but also you know how to handle it uh, better at the workplace, right? So right now I'm at the first bullet, find out how the patient is feeling. You can type in your responses and I'd be happy to read some of them, though I may not get enough time to read every response. So I want you to type in how you would find out about um, the patient's uh, feelings and thoughts about the condition. Raju says, ask her understanding of um, the cause of halitosis. Yes, that's a good option. Type in your responses. Oh yeah, how it, how she felt when the comment was made. Um, how can I help you, Afra? Very good. Okay, before proceeding further, do you mind if I ask you some general questions to get a better understanding of your condition? Excellent. Um, Nonso says you seem very low in yourself, can you tell me what's going on? Yeah. Um, yeah. So encouraging words are always um, welcome. Sorry again for the uh, power actuation. Uh, yeah. Ask the patient uh, how she's doing today and uh, how you can help. Luciel, yes. And uh, Basavi says, uh, it must be difficult for you. Could you inform me? Uh, Ankit says, hi, Maya. I know the feelings of bad breath, but don't worry if uh, it, don't worry, it can be easily cured. Yes, it might be upsetting. Mm. Uh, yeah, can you tell me about what's bothering you, Pradeep? Yes. Uh, Annalit says, would you mind telling me uh, all your concerns? Uh, BG says, I'd like to talk about your condition uh, as per your doctor. Um, BG, I don't understand that entirely, but uh, I think it's all right. Uh, yeah. So uh, when you ask a patient uh, how they are feeling, it is also to put them at ease. And uh, especially when uh, you have a sensitive issue to handle, um, the, the ice breaking uh, kind of uh, introductions are really, really helpful. Uh, so it is absolutely all right to um, you know, say uh, something which is uh, general, um, which will make them really comfortable. Um, how do you feel now, right? You look quite disturbed. Uh, yes, non. And uh, could you please tell me about your concern? A bear and uh, Devin says, would you, uh, would you, what to do with your condition? Or, um, is it like, what could I do with your condition or something like that? Um, yes, that's right. So they need to express their um, thoughts, concerns. 
Um, Kartika says uh, it's to the GP. Or oh, okay, yeah. Uh, now this is a nurse in a general practice. It doesn't say that um, it's with the GP, but uh, even nurses do consultations at uh, the GP's clinic. So that's all right. Um, so it doesn't uh, mean that she's going to see a GP. She could be, she couldn't be, or as a nurse, a nurse could be uh, handling it as well. That's all right. So, um, yep. Uh, it's good to see that many of you or most of you have an idea about uh, how to uh, do this part. Uh, let's move on to uh, slightly uh, difficult parts now. Now, empathize with the patient and explore their concerns. All right. So sometimes it could happen that you, you run out of... Um, you run out of steam. And uh, I hope you're able to see me. Okay. So how do you, um, give me some more sentences on how you can empathize uh, with the patient in this situation. I hope you are able to uh, listen to me because on one of my feeds, I'm not able to see uh, you. Right. Yeah, I guess I'm back. Okay. Uh, is she worried about uh, something in particular? Do you have any problems? Uh, I understand how you feel about your condition and I'm here to listen to your concerns. Can you tell me more about them? Excellent. That's from Noemi. Noemi Silverio. Very good. Um, now, what do you mean by empathizing? When you're empathizing, you are stepping into the other person's shoes. So it, it might might not be entirely Motas from the uh, UK. Hello. Uh, Orchid says uh, you don't have to worry. Um, let me tell you something. Sometimes we tend to overuse that expression. And I think I've mentioned that earlier also. Um, when we say it's all right, you don't have to worry that might not actually console or comfort patients entirely because it might sometimes sound as a little bit hollow, not a genuine comment when you um, just say like, uh, it's all right, don't worry about it. They, they will still be worried. So you have to be a little bit more specific about why they don't have to worry. Um, yep, yeah, I understand that you're a bit uncomfortable about your condition. Can you tell me more about it? Very good. Um, Pradeep says, I certainly understand your feeling. Don't worry, we are help, here to help you out. Um, uh, understand your feeling about what? What particular understanding is that? And, uh, you know, you have to really um, go a little bit deeper because identify those um, emotions or thoughts uh, and link it back. So if you can go back to my previous recording on uh, OET's um, recording library you'll be able to see where one where you know i discussed that in a little bit more detail right um yep so when i tell you uh, that empathizing is not just about i can understand your feeling or don't worry um, what i mean is that you have to uh, go deeper into the specific concerns that a patient shares with you and then analyze each of those, use language that is comforting and consoling, at the same time analyzing um, the uh, actual situation as well. Right. 
Um, let's now move on to reassuring the patient that bad breath can be easily treated with improvements in hygiene or lifestyle. Now, this is um, a little bit, uh, again, tricky because a reassuring or persuading or empathizing are all a little bit um, difficult for many health professionals than explaining or um, you know telling them uh, the um, the factual and giving them the factual information uh, i can appreciate your concern i can see that uh, this is very troubling for you and we will do everything we can uh, get to the bottom of it all right um, very good uh, nigel uh, i can understand your your feelings don't worry we can solve priya yes but again um, uh, you know not too much of don't worries um, there's nothing wrong with it but sometimes um, we tend to overdo it that's the only problem uh, and it's not a major concern so don't uh, get me wrong there now when you reassure what do you expect then you can reassure with uh, your emotional uh, support as much as with uh, clinical information. For instance, you can tell them, you know, um, that there are a couple of tests um, and uh, so you'll be running those tests and based on the test results, you've got treatment options, making sure that, uh, you know, the, the bacteria don't come back or, you know, all those things, that's fine. And they'll be happy to know that. At the same time, your support is equally important. So for them, it's not just about getting rid of the, the bacteria or whatever causes halitosis. It is more about their professional life. It is about their dignity. And um, so when you're reassuring, make sure you, you blend both it, rather than just highlighting uh, the, the clinical aspects of uh, the the diagnosis or the treatment. So that's one area which I want you to focus a little bit more on. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and uh, advising, yes, you can tell them you have to do these things, um, which is comparatively easier. So I've got a few more um, case notes to run today and then address some of your questions. So I'm skipping to the next one because we have a range of uh, skills to um, look at and learn. Now we have got Edward and his doctor has concluded that his curative treatment that included, included uh, radiation and chemotherapy may, may no longer be effective and should focus on palliative care. Edward has been diagnosed with advanced melanoma stage four. Now, typically, um, if somebody has a melanoma in an advanced stage, it could have probably uh, been in a metastasis. And uh, so the, the cancer would have spread to other parts of the body, other organs, perhaps. So you, you are... Um, having to talk to this patient and uh, discuss those things. So, so the doctor has asked you, now this is an, again a nurse's um, role play, but whether you are a nurse or a doctor, you don't have to worry or any other health professional, it's absolutely all right. Um, uh, it doesn't matter because the skills are the same. So a lot of candidates sometimes ask like, uh, uh, will you be covering uh, specific role play cards for specific professions? It's absolutely um, good to uh, have specific role play cards for your practice, but looking at other role play cards will really enrich your experience and your learning curve gets better. So um, that's what I would like to say. So, so if you're not a nurse and you're looking at this case, uh, role play, card, it's absolutely fine and you're going to improve your skills as well. So you don't have to worry about that. So this is a setting you are in the oncology ward. Um, 
and your background information says you have been asked to discuss a change in care plan for a terminally ill patient suffering from a rare form of melanoma. You've got uh, three bullets here. Excuse me. Find out uh, what the patient already knows about the condition and discuss the prognosis. Um, explain what palliative care is to the patient. Explore any concerns um, the patient has about his or her condition, right? Um, now, what would you ask to find out uh, the patient about uh, what they know already about the condition and uh, how do you start discussing uh, the prognosis? This is going to be really hard even at the workplace because you're going to tell somebody that their treatment is going to take a turn. And um, so this is almost um, breaking bad news to the patient and it is not easy. Perhaps the doctor has asked the nurse because the doctor doesn't want to go through that situation, um, which is true. A lot of doctors find it difficult to, to um, discuss uh, prognosis to patients when it's not really good. Yeah. Um, so what all questions would you ask? Please type in. Um, want the patient by saying you're about to discuss some news about the mel melanoma. Yep, Raju, yes. Um, all right, others, please let me know what you think would be ideal for um, discussing uh, this aspect. Luziel says, hello, Edward, how are you feeling today? Um, then say that uh, you are here to have a bit of chat regarding your condition. May I ask your understanding about your current condition, right? Hi, Aparna. Let me know your comment as well for this question. How are you getting on? OK, BG. Annalit says, uh, Would like to know uh, the extent of your knowledge. Um, can can you explain in your own words? Uh, so that's Shibi John. Regarding the information you have about the condition you are experiencing. Um, do you know what melanoma it is? How are you doing today? Shall we discuss about uh, the condition? Please tell me how far you know about it, right? Yeah, so probably you could, um, so in a situation like this, um, now this is just an example, but it could be like either you're seeing this patient for the first time, let's say, but more often it should be a patient uh, who is familiar to you. Seth says, may I ask you if you have any idea about uh, your current medical condition? Um, okay, Victor, is it okay for me to ask you about it? Jamie says, um, but before that, May I ask you how how you are informed about it? Uh, Diana says, if you don't mind, could you tell me about your disease condition? Um, Diana, uh, you are a, a specialist nurse, so probably you don't have to, you know, go too basic um, because the patient would certainly have an idea that uh, you know you know what uh, he or she is going through, or uh, in this case, Edward. Yeah. Um, how are you doing today? Can I know what you know about your condition, right? Um, see, there would have been a couple of tests done prior to this discussion and um, the doctor would have seen the patient. So it could also be that the patient is partly aware of what, it's, what is coming, right? So you can expect that as well. And um, But either way, 
when you have something like this there are a few things which you have to remember firstly you have to be honest there is no good in telling a patient that everything will be fine you'll be fine uh, don't tell patients like you know uh, there will be miracles and magic happening no 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 that's a big no no so that is uh, not a good thing for you to do so um, at the same time a lot of instances have been discussed when let's say a, a doctor tells the patient that this is uh, what's going to happen we are going to stop your radiation and chemotherapy and the patient would be in for a, a big shock perhaps the biggest shock of their lifetime when somebody tells a patient that you know their treatment is going to stop it's not going to work or perhaps they're going to die very soon so you'll have to think of how you're going to discuss those things um yeah so probing is the starting point of that um and it's very important because uh, sometimes it makes things easier for you as a health professional they might already um, have an idea they might know that um for instance edward might know that uh, he is in stage 4 things are not so good it's a bit bleak and um it's taking a, a a bad turn so so ask about that something like we've been uh, treating you for a couple of months and you know we have had a, a couple of tests recently to um, evaluate how uh, the uh, cancer is progressing so i was wondering if you have um, any idea of what uh, could be uh, the current situation uh, something like that where you give a little bit of background and then ask the patient to um, explore with you so that would be an ideal uh, condition but i mean a question but you ask uh, a lot of other things similar to that um that's all right um so yeah i can see uh some of your responses nikar sultana says would you mind sharing if you will explain regarding your disease status in your own words yeah asking them to explain in their own words is a good idea uh right um yeah caseline yes said absolutely yes so you will have a general discussion and then you will provide specific information so let's move on to the next uh sorry the next bullet which is explain what palliative care is about to the patient now again a lot of people have a misconception even in the healthcare industry that palliative care is mostly about um, you know preparing them for uh, the end of life end of life uh, treatment programs pain management and all those things which are all part of uh, palliative care but at the same time when you explain palliative care particularly to a terminally ill patient like edward you have to have a very holistic view your patient let's say somebody in this stage um, the prognosis might be he could live for let's say a few months up to a year perhaps but um it depends now yes lucille i see your answers and ankit as well um uh, yeah you know till now you are under lots of chemo and radiation therapies but uh, and the bad thing is that it's progressing too much so it's a good thing you should have to think about palliative care would you soften it a little bit angit perhaps um it's too much of information for them to take in perhaps um okay Archana says uh, hope you know about your present condition and you are having an advanced type of melanoma sorry to tell you 
uh, that I'm here to discuss about the prognosis. Okay. Um, so again, it has to come a little bit more, uh, you know, softly because um, you are giving the most shocking information of their life. So, yeah. So I was talking about palliative care in itself. Palliative care also includes their personal aspects, their... Um, imagine somebody has uh, just a few months to live. They'll have a lot of um, aspirations, um, wishes to fulfill, um, people to meet, things to accomplish, and a lot of things. Um, their family, how, how their family is going to cope with this, and uh, all of that is part of palliative care. It's not just about um, providing pain relief and, uh, you know, preparing them into the last days of life, although different people will uh, take it differently. So when you tell, for instance, um, let me think of what I would say. I might say like, uh, um, well, the test results are in and um, uh, it's a little bit worrying fact that um, the cancer is slightly spreading to other parts of uh, your body. And uh, um, I suppose uh, the um, chemotherapy and radiation will not work as much as we thought it would. So um, I want to discuss with you uh, a care plan, which would be ideal for you. Um, and uh, I'd like to bring to you uh, something called palliative care. Not sure if you're aware of it, but this is uh, what I feel is uh, the best suited treatment plan for you at this stage of uh, your condition's progression. So would you like to discuss a little bit more about that? Would you like to know what it is and... Uh, um, something of that sort, so that, uh, you know, very slowly, um, with a lot of empathy, and you can even break it down into smaller chunks and, you know, have uh, the uh, dialogue, you know, checking back on them for uh, their, uh, what their grasping of it. I'm just um, speeding up a little bit because we are almost running out of time. Uh, so think of things um, similar to what I've told when you're dealing with it. And finally, exploring uh, any concern the patient has about. Uh, so they may ask you like, you know, how about medicines? Will I not be having any uh, medications? A lot of things like that. So you'll have to, um, and also ask them to um, share with you um, any um, concerns they have, questions they have. Um, but making it a, a very smooth transition. That's very important from your part. All right. So um, Deepa says, can we discuss about palliative care, which will help you for your well-being? Yeah. Uh, and Nihaya says, I'd like to discuss with you, if possible, uh, with someone living with you about the future palliative care. Absolutely, yes. So it's all right. Um, you can ask if a family member has to be involved in the discussions and all those things. In in real clinical practice, yes. In the OITIS um, context, uh, depending on what's on uh, your role play card, um, you can't contradict. So if you're asked to discuss with uh, the patient, you'll have to do that. You can't, um, uh, you know, say that, okay, I'll discuss with the family member, that wouldn't be appropriate if that's not mentioned in uh, the role play card. So um, you have to consider both of the aspects. All right. So I hope you have learned uh, a little bit uh, on how to handle sensitive uh, issues, embarrassing issues uh, in the role play as well as at uh, work. So just to, before we wrap up, I've got some more uh, mini test where you can again uh, perfect some of the skills which we have uh, done. So some responses will be given, as you see on the screen. I do have the results here today. Would you like me to discuss it now? Now, for which situation would it be appropriate? Identify the suitable context for that. One, two, three. Discussion on routine blood test. 
discussion on biopsy report, discussion on swallowing function. For which one would you uh, choose this? Type in your response, please. Some of you got it right, some of you haven't, but it's all right. Um, it's more suitable for the uh, biopsy report. Of course, for a routine blood test, you can ask, but uh, having to have such a, a preface is more suited for a biopsy result. All right. So, um, for, for which uh, context would this be suitable? As some of you had mentioned at the beginning, um, I'm embarrassed to ask you this. What can you tell me about your sex life? So is it for history collection in a general practice or review of uh, hormone test results or discussion on uh, causes of body order? Um, see Raju, those are not watertight options. It depends on how you apply as well. But we are looking at the uh, most suitable ones. Um, more than history collection, it's more appropriate when you are reviewing uh, hormone test results because that's when you might discuss sexual issues more. Here's another one. You're very quiet. Can I ask what's going through your mind? So is it suitable for counseling um, for a patient with depression, preparing a patient for colonoscopy, or talking to a patient recovering after a surgery? I think everyone is getting right with this. Ah, that seems to be a very uh, easy uh, option for all of you. Excellent. Yeah, see, so you can use it when you're counseling someone with depression. So I suppose you have learned a little bit more on how to handle sensitive issues. Please let me know if you have any questions on what we have discussed. Sabina, again, yes, it, it depends on how you apply. These are not um, extremely tight rules. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to address some of your, your concerns about OET speaking. Let me know if you have any questions about uh, the speaking subtest or anything which you uh, have to introduce during sensitive topics. Um, okay, Alicia, uh, well, it, it depends on how the uh, consultation is going to be, but you can tell them, um, I'd like to discuss um, 
an issue which is perhaps a little bit embarrassing for you is that all right or something uh, of that sort uh, sabina you have uh, concerns in listening part c um let me know what your concern is i'm not sure if i'd be able to help you with listening right now we're almost running out of time but um, when you think of listening part c uh, remember it could be about uh, the speaker's opinion and sometimes you may have difficulty in understanding um, the language of opinion or attitude so focus on improving those skills uh, sabina that's what i can tell right now um because sometimes uh, when someone is discussing uh, some topic they may not directly tell that so you'll have to kind of uh, understand what is implied um kautha says how to um, talk to a reluctant patient all right uh well when you have a reluctant patient you can um explain why they should cooperate with you what what, what are the benefits but certainly not force in some cultures perhaps health professionals can be a little bit more um forceful and boisterous in their handling of a situation so you can't tell uh, patients especially um when you're thinking of uh, practice in western countries you have to take this medicine now it's important no so you tell them like these medicines are meant to help you with uh, this uh, problem so would you consider taking them i know you're worried about the side effects but uh, i would say the benefits are far greater than the side effects and i'll uh, be monitoring you for any of those side effects and i would be able to help if at all uh, you develop some of them so this would be really helpful for you and i want you to reconsider your decision not to uh, take the medicine so typically the interlocutor would uh, agree to that so it's about um, which is testing your ability to handle uh, difficult situations which you would actually encounter at the workplace so remember um, that's what's important um it's not about uh, you you cannot get extreme situations where the reluctant patient is constantly reluctant never talking to you at all and then you'll have to force no that's not the scenario or uh, sometimes i've heard candidates discuss angry patients and then the patient is in a tantrum no you know it is speaking uh, there wouldn't be too much of acting so it's mild uh, you know variations of difficult situations which you can handle with your ability with your like linguistic skills with your language so that's what's being tested so you don't have to worry too much about the uh, extreme scenarios which you may encounter um uh ankit yes will be able to help uh, you with uh, i i'll be posting uh, how you can contact us concern to reduce speaking task uh, hence 3 minutes for preparation um or bigger i don't uh, really understand what you mean by that uh, reduce speaking task um are you asking you'll have to uh, ask oit to do that, to do that but ideally uh, the oit speaking task has been designed to help you or provide you with enough um, time to converse so it's a good thing when you are confident with your language skills you should be really happy that you are able to speak and show how good you are and um, so it's a, a time when you can show how confident you are of course as health professionals you are confident so i want you to remember that you, at the oit uh, speaking test um a lot of candidates panic thinking oh this is a test um and they look at the interlocutor and perhaps um start freaking out you don't have to when you look at the interlocutor this thing that this is your patient and you are the health professional so you have the upper hand uh, if i may say so you have uh, this poor patient uh, depending on you for comfort and uh, 
consolation and uh, care and treatment and as we discussed today uh, how you can uh, handle some of the embarrassing situations so thank you very much for uh, being part of this uh, oet all stars masterclass from irs group irs group would be happy to give you uh, a lot of training for your oet preparation we have online packages so you can download our irs learning app from uh, the play store and uh, you have some uh, free practice sessions as well or you can um, subscribe to some of the packages if you want some oet preparation you can also contact us on the uh, email id or the telephone numbers given they are indian numbers but um, you can even uh, whatsapp on these numbers or you can uh, visit our facebook page and uh, go to our website as well for more information um, as um, one of the uh, leading uh, oet approved training providers uh, one of the few uh, premium preparation providers in india and uh, the only uh, OET All Stars provider from Asia. I'm happy to help you uh, with your uh, OET test preparation. And uh, please tune in to the upcoming sessions. And I'm happy to um, help every one of you. And good luck with your studies, with your work. And um, so bye for now. I'll see you soon with another session. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Stay healthy, stay safe.